In this next programme, David is joined by Bridget and George as they turn their attention to the whole question of communicating the gospel. Uh, when I was Bishop Salisbury before I retired, I remember very well uh, David Watson coming with his team uh, to talk to a vast assembly at Poole. Now, David, you've been all over the world as a speaker, and particularly all over England, but supposing I asked you, what do you think is the most important thing arising out of your ministry that you found out that Mr. and Mrs. 1983 ought to hear mm -hmm. from us who speak in the name of, uh, of the gospel? I think probably the, the most important thing I sense going around almost everywhere is that people need really to know that God loves them personally. Individually. Yes, yes, yes. individually. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. Uh, because I find that you know, an awful lot of people are hurting for one reason or another, often because of broken relationships. There's a lot of pain, there's a lot of loneliness, a lot of hopelessness around. And if you actually go down to the roots of all that, it's just people are not sure they're really loved and accepted. By anyone. By, by, by anyone at all. Yes, not exactly. by God. By, no, by anyone at all. Mm. Yes. And, and if there is a God, well then, you know, he's so far away, so remote, you know, that they, they don't switch on at all. Mm. But to actually know that God loves them, which sometimes has got to be tangibly expressed by other people loving them. Yes, I was going to say, <laughs> now, it's one thing to say that. Yes. Now, how do you go on from there? Uh, I mean, you had done a miracle up in York, uh, and, and the, 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 sort of the ways of the love of that community, people always talk. Uh, as they're talking about the perfection, when they've seen the whole thing down. But at the start, when you had to start from absolutely nothing, how do you infect the spirit of, of God loving each individual? How do you get that over? There's obviously quite a long process in York, but I suppose very simply you try to help people find God through Christ and to come to a place of commitment to him. Yeah. And then to understand something about the power of the spirit who can pour God's love into our hearts you know, yeah. constantly. But we try to teach people to be as committed to one another as they were to, to Christ. Yes, yes. You see, very often we talk about being uptight, don't we? You know, we're all sort of closed up like that. Mm. And if I'm uptight like this, you can't hurt me and I, I, I'll keep my distance from you I too. I can't love you either. You can't love me either. Right. But right. if I really open my heart to you and really try and, and love you and, and care for you, then I make myself very vulnerable. Mm. You may hurt me and mm. I'm likely to hurt you. Mm. And that's where you need to forgive and so on. But we found that as we taught people to be very committed to one another, so something of the reality and love of God and the forgiveness of God became tangibly expressed in our relationships. And that, that is where you have a sense of community in a world which is just, you know, sort of broken down in terms of relationships left, right and centre. And is it to pass on this that you've left York and, and to come down to London to, to work as an evangelist? There seems to be a great urgency in you that's nothing to do with the fact that you're ill and that your time might be limited. There's in your books and in things that I've heard you say, there's a great personal urgency for people. Well, I, I think, yes, I mean, you, obviously in the, in the world as a whole you can see we're in the point of extreme danger because people are so bitter, so angry with one another and we now have the potentiality of just destroying one yep. another and so on. That it, it, there is a moment of urgency, I'm sure about mm. that. And I've been concerned about, therefore, relevant communication, not just standing up in the mouth pulpit and saying, God loves you, you know, that kind <laughs> of thing, because that doesn't reach many people like that. But in a kind of you know, word-resistant age, by that I mean people bombarded by words, 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 words. Um, they don't hear words, but they can see reality. And that's why when, when oh, you were... Oh, yes, and you know, I, 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 I tell you, <laughs> take my time. I mean, in the middle of his, illustra of his sermon, address, if you like, uh, suddenly he'd stop. There was no sort of, now I'm going to show you. Simply, straight in, some dancers came on and, and illustrated what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And then there was a sketch, but there was, it was superbly done. It was brief, it was to the point, and it... It, it pointed up what you've just been saying in a way that no sermon, if I'm, I, I wouldn't have thought, ever did. No. Well, and I, it I, is a <coughs> communicator, it? Yes, in it is. any way That's right. you can, That's you'll right. use anything. Yes, mm. so I believe that the, the whole message of, of Christ uh, and God's love for us in Christ is unbelievably relevant, you know, for mm. everybody in every situation, no question about that, because he, he meets the deepest needs of men and women of all time. But it doesn't seem to be relevant by just the institutionalized forms no, no, of the church. No, no. But you know, I mean, uh, on television, obviously, a lot that is happening that is dramatic. Mm. News at 10 is mm. very dramatic and mm. so on. And therefore, it seems that we need to get back to the methods of Jesus who used parables and dramatic forms. He didn't just say, my sermon today is on humility, but he, he got a <laughs> towel around him and washed the disciples' feet. Yes. I mean, they never forgot that. But if he'd just sort of given another homily, that, that wouldn't, wouldn't have been it at all. And, and uh, are you then saying um, that 
you feel this, this kind of illustration may be the way forward in the present and the next generation, that while there will always be a form of, of instruction which is fairly straightforward and simple, nevertheless the, the sermon, the acted sermon, has a far greater place than it had in the past. I think so, yes, because it seems to me that is uh, what happened um, not in the New Testament, but in the whole medieval mystery play. Right, they took the gospel onto yes, the streets yes, where, where people yes, didn't yes. read the Bible at all, but could, could see it enacted. And this, and is, today, like, and this is what say. the young want to see, isn't it? it uh, yes. This is why they feel so frustrated in church. So yes. that's the sort of one side of communication, yes. the, the, the drama and everything else, and the other side is through the reality of people yes. loving each other. And if people can see both those things... That's right. You, I mean, you can't just do drama because that could be just play-acting, yes, and Jesus exactly. warned us about play-acting. He called it hypocrisy, of course. but. Basically, people need to know that, you know, there is a caring ex community, the body of Christ, the church mm. today, which really accepts people as they are, cares for mm. one another, because let's face it, we have fantastic needs, all of us, mm. many problems, mm. many needs, and we need to care for one another and pray for one another. I think it'd be lovely if we could maybe just pray, um, because I'm sure there's so many people watching yeah, at this David, moment, you, you know. You, you, Can we do that you, before you we pray finish? with us. Let's do that. Father, we thank you that you have shown yourself to be a God of love. Help us and all those in pain and need to realize how much you love them and to trust you whether they understand it or not. For Jesus' sake, amen. Amen. <laughs>